Michigan. 1988, Dispensing Institution is Chesney High School. She was interviewed by Kelly Lasky. Alright, let's just start out and tell me everything you remember about the birthdays of the past and what made them memorable. Well, the birthdays of the past. Well, I do remember one thing about birthdays were very important in our family. Mm -hmm. Not so much that we got a lot of presents because there was a big family of eight mm -hmm. and my father was in the baby business and we went to this last part of the depression. I remember a little bit of that. But on our birthdays, we always had a beautiful, special, decorated cake. And the one birthday I remember so vividly, I told my father, when he, when he made that birthday cake, it was a Peter cake. Ooh. And I kept saying, you know, Dad, that's my wedding cake. And he, well, he thought I would eat. just said, oh, don't be silly. Don't be silly. I said, it is. That's my wedding cake. Mm -hmm. And as it ended out, it was. Mm -hmm. Only I was, see, I was 18 on that birthday, mm -hmm. on the 2nd of August. And I was married the 27th. Aww. So I've got quite a few pictures of that cake. Mm -hmm. And that really was, uh, and another outstanding birthday for me is the fact that I'm alive when I was 62 years old. Because I could draw social security. And that was very special. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, like, what about the birthday meals? Is there anything special about that? Not that I remember otherwise, and it was usually we celebrated a birthday on a Sunday, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Sunday, like I mentioned, you come from a large family. My dad always did the cooking. That was my mother's day to rest. Mm -hmm. You know, because she had worked not only at home, she worked a lot on the baby, too. But they, I remember my dad always did all the cooking on Sundays. And the uh, children, we all chipped in a little bit and did our part and always did the dishes. My mother didn't cook or do dishes or anything on Sundays. Up uh, well, anytime. Mm -hmm. As we got older, but I remember. Oh. But I always remember my dad cooking for dinner on Sundays. Do you remember anything special of what you ate? I was always a good eater. <laughs> and back in those days, we didn't have a lot of meat. But we always had a lot, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of good vegetables because my dad always had a huge garden mm -hmm. and um, we didn't have deep freezers or even a lot of times, we didn't have refrigerators either. We had ice boxes, you know, ice boxes and, but in the basement of the house we would bring in dirt and the carrots and mm -hmm. the cabbage and the potatoes were put in that dirt to, and there was no heat down in there because we didn't have furnaces, we just mm -hmm. had separate uh, wood burners or coal burners in the room, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how we kept the things. It wasn't canned. Mm -hmm. But that's how the vegetables, the raw vegetables, kept fresh. Right. Well, that's neat. Um, like, do you remember anything about the depression? Like, how were meals affected? Like, in the well, see, I was, uh, I told you I was born in Montrose, and when I was about five years old, we moved to Lansing. Mm -hmm. My father bought a big building in Lansing with a big life. And I don't, the only thing I actually remember about being there is we lived above the basement. And the register was down from the living room, was right down into the basement. Mm -hmm. And I remember hollering down that register to tell my mother I knew how to tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a real big event for me. And I was probably seven years old when we moved from Lansing to Byron. Mm -hmm. And my dad was always still in the basement. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the birthday cake. I'm really interested. Like, what made it different from any ordinary cake? Well, because he always decorated it so beautifully. Mm -hmm. He would make a very special cake, too. It wouldn't be just a, a white cake or a chocolate cake. It might be a cherry nut cake or something that he'd put special cherries and nuts. And everything was made from scratch. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing as a box mix. Even as long as my father had the bakery, he never used a mix. Yeah, everything was made from scratch. <coughs> um, well, what kind of ingredients were involved in making cake? Well, you use cake flour. It was a real rich cake flour. Mm -hmm. And eggs. And he always bought his eggs fresh from farmers. And uh, then they used a very good vegetable shortening. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what made these things better than other things? I mean, what made what makes cake different different from any other flour? Well, it's a richer flour. It's a much richer cake. Is a much richer flour. And then see, there you would have several different kinds. You would have a bread flour, you would have a cake flour, and you would have a pastry flour. And the pastry flour would be used just for pie crust and rich biscuits, sort of biscuits that you'd use for shortcake. Mm-hmm. That's what you'd make those are. But the cake flour had a little sweetening taste to it. You didn't have to taste the flour itself. And it was very fine, very fine. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. And then it was always mixed my hand. He had real uh, nice mixers, you know, electric ones that we used for the bread and the donuts and the fried cake mix and stuff like that. But the cake was mixed by hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how did he make them? How did he decorate them? Well, they, did, they didn't really have a lot of the type of decorating equipment they do now, you know, with the metal or the glass and everything. It was like a canvas bag. Mm-hmm. And the bag itself would be about that big, see. And yeah. then he had little different clips that he would put on the end of it. Mm-hmm. But um, then he'd fill that with this real rich, uh, creamy icing. And uh, it was just an icing that you could set and scrape. You know, with a finger <laughs> or with a spoon, scrape it off the cake and eat it. And it wasn't a sickening frosting that he used. Uh-huh. It was a real rich, moist frosting. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and that cake, that particular cake was four layer, four different layers high. See? It would be big like this, and a little bit smaller, and a little bit smaller. And that was all decorated, beautiful decorations all around it. Mm-hmm. And because it was my birthday, see, he used it in different colors. Had it been uh, really a wedding cake, it would have been all done in white. Mm-hmm. 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 Would you describe the picture if you decorate it, like how, like a pattern? Well, if it was for one of the boys, he would make uh, cake party about that big, it may be square, round, either one. And with theirs, it would either have a car or a boat or it would um, have a train, boats quite a bit, or even the man fishing with my brothers because my dad was a hunter mm-hmm. and also a fisher. And we used to go camping a lot, but always in a tent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of our, all mm-hmm. our traveling was always done just in, in the state of Michigan. And did you put ice cream on this cake? Not usually, not usually. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that was, that was, oh my goodness, that was a luxury. When we had ice cream was in the wintertime and we made our own ice cream. My dad would make the custard. And then we'd bring the uh, snow in and ice and pack it around. And then we'd have to crank it, you know, in the old fashioned ice cream mixer. And most of the time it was done right out on the porch where it was cold and everything. But my father made the, the filling, you know, that they started with. And then you would use, uh, so you would splurge on cream to put in it. Mm-hmm. But what type of ingredients did you use there again? That would be milk and uh, egg and then uh, a little flour because they would have to cook it and thicken it. So. Mm-hmm. And then you'd get uh, whipping cream or thick cream. And then you would mix that in there too. And then you'd use vanilla, or if you wanted a different flavoring, then you'd use cherry or whatever. But that was uh, that was only in wintertime that we had ice cream. So whoever had the winter birthday yeah. had the ice cream on the Unless cake? once in a while he would uh, buy a big cube of ice and chip it himself, and we'd put that around it. Well, that's really interesting. But it, and it was good ice cream. Mm-hmm. Very good but. ice cream. But you ate it all right that day, because the only place you had to keep it was in the ice box. Mm-hmm. And it would have to sit right on the chunk of ice to stay frozen. But we had big family reunions. Mm-hmm. And I had an uncle that lived in Flint that owned a drugstore. <coughs> and when Uncle Herman came with all his fa- with his family, we just had a, a one girl and two boys. But Uncle Herman always brought ice cream. And that was unusual for us to have. That was the only time of the year that we had bought an ice cream. Mm-hmm. And he would have dry ice packed in, you know, because he lived in the city where it was easy to get those things. But I always remember that Uncle Herman bringing, and he'd be bringing two big buckets, you know, filled with dry <laughs> ice. And we couldn't hardly wait to get to eat so we could have ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of flavor would that be? Would that he'd be? usually bring two different flavors. Ooh. One would be vanilla, and then he'd bring a different, either a chocolate or... They, I don't think back in those days they even had half the flavors that we have now. 
Because I remember just having mostly vanilla, or maybe they'd have, a, well, orange pineapple was one that I remember having back in those days. Mm -hmm. That's neat. <coughs> um, what about the candles? They had candles. We always had candles on our cake. Uh -huh. And of course, it was just like it is now, you know, you have to make a wish and then blow out your candles mm -hmm. to see if that wish is going to come true. <laughs> Uh, I re Christmas was always a big time in our family, too. We always had a beautiful Christmas tree. And we made the popcorn stuff to go on it, you know. And at Christmas time, if we if we would get a... My mother was, always, was a beautiful seamstress, and she made all our clothes. And uh, some of them were made sometimes from flower sacks, you know. They were colored flower sacks. But our sheets and everything were made from flower sacks. And my uncle that lived in uh, Flint, he was an Italian, and of course he, they came from Italy. And his mother made beautiful crocheted lace. Mm -hmm. So when my dad would get through with a hundred pounds of flour, we would have to rip that sack apart. You know, it's just a special way that you can do it to get that uh, string out all it, and then we'd roll it up in balls. And that's what she used to knit the, I mean crochet, bed spreads and tablecloths and everything mm -hmm. from that. So you used every bit that you could, uh, you know, you learn to use those things because they were just nothing else. <laughs> you didn't have anything else to use. But, um, there was, uh, in that Christmas time, one of the big things that we would get with people, a huge orange. And though, you, we just didn't have oranges mm -hmm. like you have now. If, um, they were there, but people, we didn't have the money to buy them. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice at Christmas time because we'd have more than one orange. And then my grandpa Bishop, at one, uh, I think I must have been about 10, 9, 10 years old when we lived in Elton. And that's way up in the thumb. Mm -hmm. And my grandpa Bishop owned a big farm right out here where General Packing is. That was his farm and he had a huge orchard there with apple trees and pear trees and grapes and all that. And he would send us a big barrel a couple times a year up there just filled with apples. He'd get oh, wow. these big barrels from Pete because he was a cattle buyer from Pete's also. So I suppose he got you know, fresh fruit each oh, for your birthday. Yes. Yeah. We always had fresh uh, fruit from his orchard for our birthday. Wherever we was at, he'd send it to us. Oh, that's special. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to the candles, like what were they made out of? They were made out of wax, just like they are now. Dipped? Yes, all dipped. Mm -hmm. you, I always thought that we had a little bit larger candles mm -hmm. on our cakes. Mm -hmm. but, you know, they have them kind of small now. And the, they have little forms like animals that I used to put on my kids' cakes that had, you could put the candles in the animal's back, you know. Oh, that, oh that's so interesting. Yeah. Well, how many inches would you say the candles were? Well, I think the candles are probably about two inch high, mm -hmm. inch and a half, two inches high. Mm hmm They're like, mm -hmm. the, they, were they molded? Or were they like Not, the just a plain. Not as pretty as they are now, you know, where they all pull up and everything. They were just plain, mm -hmm. up and down candles. Uh -huh. Once in a great while, we could get them in color. <laughs> you know, because my dad being yeah. in a bakery would have to decorate cakes for people. A lot of times he'd have the colored candles there to uh -huh. sell them for the cakes, too. Uh -huh. You say about it that the candles are dipped. Were they dipped or were they set in the mold? No, I think these were dipped. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Because they, there is a little difference between them. Uh-huh. Usually the dip ones will run in a certain way. Uh-huh. But the mold ones. You know, it just kind of boomed out. Well, that makes them unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you remember anything about the matches that you met with? I mean, because there's all different kinds. Uh, I don't remember of having the small folders of matches like you pick up around places here now. It was always in a big box because we used matches a lot back then. See? We had we had to start the fire in our stove with the matches in our cooking stove where we used uh, wood and coal and that, mm -hmm. and we always got the matches in the box. They were, cut, they were always a safety match. We always had to strike them, you know, on the side of the box. Uh -huh. But I never remember us ever having those small book matches. Mm -hmm. Do you know the, like, what they were made of, like, phosphor, really phosphorus matches? I, would, I think so. I think so, that they were, because I remember always being blue. Mm -hmm. You know, they would, the end of them would be blue with a red tip usually on it. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Alright, now here's the time when you can really let this. What about the gifts? 
Well, that I really don't remember much about except uh, one time getting a doll for my birthday. Mm -hmm. And my mother had made clothes for it. Okay. Do you remember what kind of doll it was? I do remember that I'd gone to the 4-H <laughs> when we lived in Elton. And uh, they had, they had, the county fair wasn't bad at And the girls from the 4-H would take their doll, or take uh, their dresses that they made, or whatever they made, their project was that they made, they'd take it over there to display it at the fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know whether mine was in a bracket where I maybe had uh, like second or third place or something, I don't know. But I I received enough money that year for my dress being on display that I bought a Shirley Temple doll. Was that something really good? Oh, wow. back in my day, Shirley Temple was in. <laughs> you know, she was, well, she was a star when she was three, four years old. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, my sister younger and I, her name was Shula. She was named after Shirley Temple. <laughs> she was born just about a month or so after, I think, mm -hmm. she was born. But uh, she was, uh, I remember going to a lot of her movies. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I was so proud of that Shirley Temple doll. I wish I had it now. It really was something. Yeah. Did you have good movies on your birthday? Oh, yeah. When we lived in Elton, we lived right across from the theater. And back in, the, in those days, I keep getting back in those days, you know, uh, they used to have Saturday afternoon matinees. Mm -hmm. And it was usually always cowboy shows. Gene Autry and all those, and uh, Tom Mix and everything. And they would be continued series. Maybe to move that particular movie might be on only a half hour. Mm -hmm. And then you would have a regular movie. Because mm -hmm. they'd have double deal on it there. And I would... Uh, I worked in the big room and help, would help my dad, so that was my treat. I would go to the movie. And, uh, so it was, it was just interesting. And I've never gotten over like you left for me. But I still like to watch it. Oh, I bet. Well, it's like you really don't remember anything like the gifts you got. What about, do you remember giving gifts like two brothers and sisters? Like what kind of they got? No, usually if it, well, a gift to us would have been a new pair of shoes. And what kind of shoes would those be? Well, it would be uh, most of the time, actually, we went very far in the summer time. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we got a new pair of shoes for school. And we'd always have a pair of shoes that was saved just for church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that pair of shoes would have to usually last us a whole year in school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and back in those, I remember when, you know, when I was younger, we wore shoes that laced up the year. Some a lot like the styles now, of uh, the <laughs> shoes that you girls are wearing that lace up like that. Mm -hmm. Only ours are sturdier sole, you know, a thicker sole. Mm -hmm. And it was, when I lived up in that area, it was cold. <laughs> and you were in long underwear, in long socks, mm -hmm. you know, to school. Because we walked. Yeah. We had to walk a mile out of town to our school. Oh, wow, it's kind of hike. Yes, it was. And I remember there was uh, at the same place uh, in Elton where we had the bakery and over on the corner like that, they, they opened up a ice cream store where we couldn't have ice cream, <laughs> sodas, and things like that. And they used, then there was right across from where the theater, right where the theater was too, they had a little ice cream cart there in a small drugstore. And that was when popsicles first came out, in fudge stickles. <laughs> and on that stick would be, uh, sometimes you'd get a free one, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you didn't get anything, but I thought the luckiest thing for me that I ever did, I won a brand new pair of roller skates. Uh. And skating was really great, mm -hmm. because um, as I got a little bit old, a couple of years older, the town between Elton and Pigeon was five miles, mm -hmm. and that was all paved, which was Ooh. unusual. They have a paved highway, mm -hmm. but at night we used to sleep all the way over there because it would be we'd turn right and go a mile into the town, but we wouldn't go into the town. But between Elton and Pigeon, we'd, it'd be ten or twelve of us. We'd skate over there every night. Did you get any pair of skates for your birthday? No, I don't remember ever getting skates because my brothers. See, I had older brothers, mm -hmm. and when they got a pair of skates, 
they could mow lawns and a lot of different things to earn a little money. Mm -hmm. Well, then if they get a new pair of skates, they give me their old ones. Mm -hmm. But then they usually need to have new wheels on. But I had a, that brand new pair off to myself. <laughs> Um, what about books? Would you ever get any books here? Oh, yeah. I always read a lot of books. And I remember my mother getting us books. Nature books, you know. And uh, books about Bible story books. And, and uh, history books. Mm -hmm. About the United States and the different states. And how the pioneers landed, you know, and then how they came across the different areas. Or how the, how the states were made. Mm -hmm. I've always read a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you have to remember any famous authors? What authors that stand out? Well, there was a lady author, and I was just trying to think of her name, that I read a lot of her books because so many times those authors would write books in series. Mm -hmm. You know, and you maybe have five or six or eight or ten of those that went And then, uh, all right, what's the author in a while? Kerwood Castle. Mm -hmm. James Oliver Kerwood. I think I read every book he wrote. <laughs> Even before we moved here. Mm -hmm. I had read a lot of his books. Because I had an aunt that was a nurse and an aunt that was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. My mother came from quite a large family too. Mm -hmm. And they used to give us a lot of books to read. Um, so that was probably a popular thing back to the mm -hmm. Right. Or my mother would make us a new dress. Mm -hmm. Or uh, skirt and blouse. Mm -hmm. What was the style that, like, for your birthday? Like, what kind of new outfit would you get? Well, I don't think that actually, right now, a lot of the, the dresses that the girls are wearing were dresses I remember wearing as a girl. Mm -hmm. I or, that. Well, and they went from long to short. Never went, I don't think they ever went, as I was younger, they never went quite as short. <laughs> you know, until I was about. I must have been about 18 or 19 when they started wearing the mini skirts, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but then that didn't last long and they dropped down in length. Mm -hmm. But we wore quite a few what they called pinafores. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a lot of them that were from even the early 1920s, 1918, 1920, mm -hmm. you know, where they would have pouchy, lots yeah. of me like sleeves, pouch sleeves. And then they come down here, and then they'd have frills around the top, and lot, they use a lot of fairly lacy things, and a mm -hmm. lot of um, a lot of design in They would be pleated and tucked and stitched, you know. Mm -hmm. The women, my grandmother was a, a seamstress. Besides, she was made hat. Ooh. So uh, new hat for your birthday? Yeah, she would make hats and give them to her. What would they look yeah. like? Well. Larger than what they wear now, you know, bonnet type hats, or then they would wear. They'd maybe get so they'd have them where they sit here, but they'd have a wide brim. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they'd wear them where they sit back here with wide lace on it and a great big bow with a streamer down here. You know, oh, <laughs> it sounds neat. It sounds uh, right. So it just seems strange, you know, even now when they get so. Of course, the hats are coming back again, mm -hmm. which is nice too. Mm -hmm. Because it's been quite a few years that we haven't worn that very much. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you remember anything Mr. Brothers got? Not, uh, not otherwise than uh, they might get a knife. Mm -hmm. That would be something boys always wanted, you know. They always needed a jackknife. <laughs> because they were always whittling on things, you know. They would make uh, these little pipes that you put in your mouth and blow on, you know. And um, they would carve out little like uh, ducks or geese or squirrels. Mm -hmm. That was a pastime for it. Of course, my mm -hmm. sister was seven years older than I was, and the other two were younger. But I had a brother that was only a year and two, three, four months older than I. Mm -hmm. And so the other brothers were quite a bit older. And uh, I always played baseball. Always played with the boys. Baseball and, and stuff like that. And rode horseback and was kind of a tomboy. <laughs> And I was the only one that, well, the girls that stayed in the bakery and worked with my dad, too. Uh -huh. I liked to, it was nice, because I loved it. I still like to bake mm -hmm. and make things right from scratch. I always like to bake my own bread, you know. Mm -hmm. Like the bread get any bad, any bad mm -hmm. Yeah. And did they have to get a new gun? Yes. When they were older, they always had a gun. Yeah. And when I was older, I went hunting with my dad. I could use one of his older ones. 
But when you started to go hunting, if you killed your game, like a squirrel or a rabbit or a pheasant, mm -hmm. you cleaned it. <laughs> you learned how to clean it, too. Oh. And I only got one pheasant. <laughs> but I remember I had to clean it. We always got fish. When we lived in Byron, the bakery was right, there's a, there's a river that runs right through Byron, and it was at the back of the buildings that run through there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had wild grapevines on the trees. See, the, there was quite a bit of a slope down to where the river was. It wasn't a deep river like here, you know, because we would uh, go fishing. We always had a canoe and we'd go fishing in there. And sometimes my sister and I would paddle the canoe a couple of miles down the slope. But um, we would get on those grapevines and one person would hang on to the grapevine and then you'd pull that person back a long way and then you'd push them. And they would swing way out across that <laughs> river that runs through the village and back again. It was it was fun. How's that? <laughs> My cousin didn't think it was very fun one day, though, because she was staying with us and and she uh, she lied to her mother that day. She told her mother a lie, and I didn't think it was very nice. <laughs> and I, you know, I thought some way or other, because it was concerning me that she lied about. Mm -hmm. And I got a spanking for it. So I thought, <laughs> Bonnie, I'm going to get you yet today. And uh, so we're all out there playing on the riverbank, and we go down there and pat, wait around, and then we really come back up. And a couple of us had grabbed down to the vines ourselves and just swung all over there. And they said, Oh, come on, Bonnie the vine and I'll pull you out. I'll pull you in this. You'll just go out a little ways. Not very far, just a little ways. And um, so I pulled her back quite a bit. And I let her go. And she made the mistake of looking down. Mm -hmm. Instead of just looking across how far she was going to go, you know, and she looked down and she got scared and she let go of it. And you know where she landed? Right in the middle. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. <laughs> because she lied. <laughs> I thought I was going to teach you a lesson. <laughs> uh, what about, uh, how did you wrap your gifts? My brothers used to make wrapping paper out of the, we always um, wrapped uh, things in the bakery. We'd have a big, a huge roll of paper, you know, about like that thick. And it was on a roller thing, and then you could pull it out so far and rip it off, and then we'd wrap the bread up like that when you'd sell it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, because what, it was back in those times, I don't remember so much of having wax paper. Mm -hmm. Where years later, we had a regular machine, see, that would be hot. And mm -hmm. we could wrap the bread in this wax paper and shove it through that machine, and it would seal. Mm -hmm. But up before that, and my, I had two brothers that were beautiful artists. Uh -huh. And uh, they would rip that paper off, and they would draw pictures on it. And that's what we used for wrapping gifts in. Um, was, I don't think the paper was brown then? No, it was white. Oh, it was white. white. It was white paper. Mm -hmm. What did they draw with? They would use colors. They'd draw and then they would color the pictures. Mm -hmm. And then I remember we had funny papers back then that were colored. Mm -hmm. And my mother would save those to <laughs> wrap gifts in. Okay. And then she would make ribbons mm -hmm. and save them, you mm -hmm. know, and then she'd press them all out and then retie them. Yeah. You learn to be very economical. <laughs> That's that. Mm -hmm. um, what about, you know, you said your grandma made hat. Um, would you put them in, I know they used to be really fancy big bags. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you ever get a gift in with a big box? No, I don't remember ever getting anything in one of those boxes because those would have been saved just for paying customers. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Um, what about little cedar boxes? Like if you have a little trinket? Or a little spoon or type thing. Did you ever find it in little cedar box? I don't remember of having that. We, once in a while we would have metal boxes Ooh. that we would save things in, you know, like the hairpins for our hair. And of course, back in those days, you used bobby pins and hairpins. My sister mostly because my dad always cut my brother's hair, so he cut mine too. <laughs> and I never had, um, I don't remember of ever having my hair grown out. I always had like a boyish bob. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in the summertime, or in the, like in the fall, we would go to the people that had uh, raspberries and strawberries, and we would do what they call pick on shares. And we'd pick so many quarts, and then um, you would get paid.
so much, like maybe even just a penny or three, four pennies for a quart. Well, then when I would pick long enough to, uh, you know, what I did, like, I would pick long enough to earn whatever raspberries and strawberries that my mother needed to can mm -hmm. for pies or to make the jam. So. And all I remember that one year, how happy I was because I, it, they had a good crop. Mm -hmm. And I had worked long enough, so my mother had all the berries that she needed to can, and I earned a dollar and seventy-five cents, enough to get a permit. And that was the first permit I got, and I was, I was either 12 or 13 years old. Mm -hmm. That's the first time my hair was long. Mm -hmm. Enough, you know, so I was going to have a permit. Mm -hmm. Well, then you'll probably get a little hair pins and stuff mm -hmm. your Oh, yeah, then. they had hair pins and... And uh, they had, the hairpins would come down and turn like that. Mm -hmm. So when you put them in your hair, you know, they wouldn't slip right out. Mm -hmm. And my sister could wave my hair. She had a real talent. Nana was talking about that. She was talking about grandma. She talked about how they used to do that all over. Oh, yeah. Time. And they used to, they used to use uh, ink white mm -hmm. for the wave set. <laughs> for the sunny lotion. Yeah. yeah. Because it was so expensive to buy it, you know. Because, and eggs were cheap at that time. The gals would have them on the pot. And they'd want my sister to do their hair. Mm -hmm. And so they'd bring the eggs in. And then my mother would save the yolks to make the lemon pie with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. What about birthday cards? Oh. And, uh, you could buy a birthday card I, back then, I'm sure, for five or ten cents. With nice verse on it. Mm -hmm. You know, because everything was cheaper. Nobody made as much money. And um, things just didn't cost that much. Mm -hmm. So I do remember getting pretty birthday cards from my parents. Mm -hmm. Do you remember who they were? Made that? I mean, were they Hallmark cards? Yes, yes. Way, way back they were Hallmark cards. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably why I still prefer Hallmark cards. <laughs> Is because I grew up knowing that they were good cards, you know. Mm -hmm. And we'd go to the drugstore and buy the Hallmark cards. <laughs> Do you remember a homemade card? Oh, yes. We made a lot of homemade cards. We always made our, our Mother's Day cards and our Valentine cards. We didn't know what it was to buy a Valentine card. Mm -hmm. We made it. Mm -hmm. Because we all, it seems like in every class in school you took art. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing. You made your Valentine's. You start making them a month or two months and get a Valentine's Day. Maybe because they had all the colored paper. But you mm -hmm. worked with you know, make them. So if you would make the ties with colored paper, mm -hmm. then would you use crayons? No, it was just more or less the colored paper. Okay. Even you would use all the little pieces of colored paper to cut the wording out. Oh, that's neat. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have fancy lace mm -hmm. to put on. My dad would have the, a lot of this, these lace things, you know, that he would put on a, the plate and then you put this lace doily on it. Mm -hmm. And so I could take some of the edges of those doilies and we could cut some of them out, you know, okay. and put them on the valentine and make different designs with it. So it was, it was a creative thing to do. Yeah, it sounds like it was time for something, too. It was, yeah. I mean, we don't do that so much anymore. No, I don't think so. Just whip it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't Oh, well, we played a lot of cards. My grandma and grandpa used to come up and live with us in the wintertime because we, my mother didn't want them to be alone. And grandpa always taught us all kinds of card games. And of course, we played dominoes and checkers and fiddlesticks. We had a lot of games that we played. That's we just a, um, my next question. Oh, were there family get-togethers on your birthdays? You know, like mm -hmm. little parties? Yeah. Well, especially when we were down where we lived near the family. Of course, when we lived in Elton, the only time we seen the family otherwise than my grandma and grandpa Judd was um, we would come down to the family unions. We always came to the bishop reunion. My mother's maiden name was Judd. Mm -hmm. So twice a year we'd come down and see all the relatives. Mm -hmm. I was about 16, I think, when we moved back to Chesney. Mm -hmm. But my mother and dad were both born in the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's really we always had a lot, of, a lot of fun as a family. We were very close. Mm -hmm. How much did you do that as a family? What made it special? Well, when we, like, when we lived in Elton, we were only about 13, 14 miles from Caseville. Mm -hmm. Beautiful lake. And every night, my dad took us over there swimming. The whole family went. Mm -hmm. 
when the bakery was closed, we all piled in the car and went over there swimming. And then quite often on Sunday, we went there mm-hmm. to spend the day. We'd take a picnic lunch and spend the day. So like if, you would, uh, if a person had a summer birthday, would you guys just pack up and go to the beach and Well, and uh, yeah, we'd have a picnic. And there were several different parts in the country. You know, a lot of the farms would have still wooded areas where there would be a river running through it and they'd make a little park out of it. And they would let people come in and, and you know, people were neat and they weren't destructive either. And they would always enjoy having people come come to their little park and you could have a birthday party or whatever. Mm-hmm. And one thing, I, I don't know if you've ever done it, but back up in Elton where we lived, it seems like years ago the snow was so much deeper than what it is now. Mm-hmm. Because up there the snow would be so deep it would be high as the electric l- wires going out, you know, in the country. And a lot of times we didn't have school, and even if we did have school, that was the joy of the day, you know. We would jump on, to, they had these old, old toboggan sleds. You know, the big ones that were pulled like at least by four horses. Mm-hmm. And that's how the farmers brought their milk in. Mm-hmm. And they would let us kids jump on those sleds, and we'd ride a sled four or five miles out in the country. And then we'd jump on another one and come back. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Really a lot of fun. I really yeah. think, uh, I think back in those times, we played outdoors more in the winter than a lot of the kids do now. Of course, we didn't have TV. Mm-hmm. We had radios, but they were run on like a battery or something. It was in uh, phonograph records with oh, huge, you know, things. You had to crank them. <laughs> and and then we didn't have records that were flat like that. Our records would be about that long mm-hmm. and about that big around. And they would go round and round. See, the needle would be up in here. And they'd go round and round and play. They had beautiful music. Oh. You know, nothing like now. That's a May Day uh, my, co- my cousin and I, we saw this record. We were like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. Right, so it's amazing. What kind of little party trick thing? What you know, little games did you play? Like when we got together, like with your cousin, you know? Um, seems to me like there was the uh, game that we played where you had to uh, drop a clothespin in a bottle. I can't even remember the name of it now. Mm-hmm. And uh, tic-tac-toe. That was the game. I, I can't even remember exactly how. Then there was games like uh, where there were stairs. You know, we always had houses with porches on it. And a lot of my friends lived in houses. I usually always lived above the bakery. But uh, a couple times in Elton we lived in the house. They wouldn't come to Chesney and we did. But when they had the steps, and then you'd play this game, and, and uh, they'd put their hands like this, and then you'd go like this through their hands. But you'd have a button, mm-hmm. you know. And then uh, you would, then all of a sudden you'd say, button, button, who's got the button? <laughs> and then different ones would try to guess who had the button. And if they guessed who had the button, then they could move down so many steps. Uh-huh. And then the other ones had to set there. Oh. Um, what's the other one? Oh, what do they call that thing? You always had to play it, oh, like over a garage. <laughs> Any eye over. And uh, you would always hit the ball, you know, throw the ball mm-hmm. over. And they'd say, any eye over. And they had, you had to look for it, see. Well, then if you didn't catch it, you lost. You know, you went by a point system. Mm-hmm. And then uh, whoever had the uh, most points, you got a point every time you catch that ball. Mm-hmm. And then we played a lot of hide and go seek games. <laughs> I remember even when we moved to Jeff's thing, it was um, the birds kids lived just down the street from us, and the Morsets lived another way. We had about 15, 20 of us kids at night used to play hide and go seek. <laughs> and we'd hide within a we'd uh, hide within about a two four block area. So you can imagine how much fun you had trying to find somebody. Especially <laughs> when it got dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Any more? Do you remember? Well, I remember when we moved here. I always had that my brother and I mm-hmm. were up early enough in the morning to. To, uh, my dad always went to work at 2 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and his oven was fired by coal. He didn't have electric ovens or gas ovens like they have now. And my brother and I would be there to uh, frost all the rolls, help make some of them. And, but we frosted them, got all the showcases full, got all the donuts fried, and with glazed donuts, some had nutty frosting and so on. That, those were all in the showcases before we went to school in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then at noon, 
I always come home I come right to the bakery and wait on customers while my dad would go home to eat his lunch. And then I would run home and grab something to eat and go off to school. Mm -hmm. And ten minutes after school was out, I was due back in the bakery again. <gasps> and then oh. the, I, after uh, the bakery was closed, about the time, then when the door was locked, when the people didn't clean up, I washed all the cases inside the house. Mm -hmm. And all the pans were washed were all ready for the new sheets of paper to be put on them in the morning. But those cases were washed every single day. My dad's bakery was spotless. <laughs> That's really, um... And I remember working in the bakery when I was so short, I had to stand. I couldn't look over the top of the counter. I had to come around the corner or stand on a stool so <laughs> the people could see me. And even when I would slice the bread and wrap it, I had to stand on a stool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was fun. I liked it. And my dad always used to buy his walnuts by 100 pound sacks, you know. And that when we wasn't busy waiting on customers, that's what we did was crack walnuts and pick the nut meats out for him to use in the, in the cookies and on the cakes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. oh, but it was good. I think it was good training for us. Yeah, I bet. Because we knew how to work. Uh-huh. Getting back on, uh, like, family get-togethers, the people, um, well, what time did car? What time did you? What time period did you have a car? Well, my folks usually always had a car, mm -hmm. and um, because I I had pictures of one of the first cars that my father got, mm -hmm. and it was one where they had these curtains on the side that just snapped, you know, they pull out <laughs> Model A, Model T. Mm -hmm. So I always remember them having a car. Does that make it easier for relatives to come and, like, come to a birthday party? Yes. Well, most of, a lot of the other relatives wasn't, it had, didn't have as big families as we had. Mm -hmm. And they had newer cars. And they used to come up the elephant to see us a lot. Especially my uncle would come and bring his friends. And they'd always go pheasant hunting. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there was a lot of good farmland up there. And the people knew my dad and would let them uh, hunt on their farmland. So they'd have plenty of pheasants to take back at the end of the day. Uh -huh. We would have a big pheasant dinner for them at noon. So they'd come in early in the morning and bring some of their pheasants in. We'd have them all clean and have a big pheasant dinner for them at noon and another one at night. And then they would still take home one under their limit was two or three a day or whatever. They'd still, everybody took home their allotment of pheasants that night. Mm -hmm. And that was a fun time when those men would come up and go hunting. Because my brother, my uncles would bring their brothers with them, and some of the kids could come up too. And we had a lot of fun with our cousins that day. Mm -hmm. Does that usually happen on birthdays? Not as much on birthdays, mm -hmm. because you know they celebrated so many times. The birthdays were during their school year when they wasn't able to come up, and sometimes they maybe if there was the birthday that was going to be in a month or two from when the time the pheasant hunting was. Then we'd celebrate a birthday right while they were there.